Coming up next here on ESPNU, Dabo Sweeney. He's not going to wear that suit during the game. He dresses down. 28 minutes away from Clemson in the top 25 at Boston College in Chestnut Hill. Adam. Oh, already missed a 32-yarder. They're down one with less than four minutes to go. Cole Stout and Clemson getting set to take on Boston College next here on ESPNU. We'll keep you posted. An absolutely beautiful fall day in Boston, and it's homecoming for the Eagles of Boston College. Today, they welcome Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers, who are back in the top 25. And they're led by their All-American sack machine, Vic Beasley. Welcome to the ACC on ESPN. Without Notre Dame on the 2014 schedule, this game has been the hot ticket for the BC Eagles fans. It's number 24, Clemson, and the Eagles of Boston College. And both teams come in 4-2 and two overall. Clemson held on for a dramatic win over Louisville last week to go to 3-1 and one in the ACC, while BC got its first ACC win at North Carolina State. The Eagles are 1-1. One Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Chestnut Hill alongside my partner, former West Virginia tight end Anthony Becht. I play Matvik. Huge win for Clemson last week against Louisville, but it came at a terrible price as they lost their freshman feet on quarterback Deshaun Watson for at least a month on this play. Looked harmless enough, a stiff arm to the face mask, but it's a broken finger. Four screws in that finger. In his first two career starts, over 700 yards and eight touchdowns. But now Cole Stout, who was benched for Watson, becomes the starter again, Anthony. Yeah, you're right. Cole's been a career backup behind the great Taj Boyd. He finally got his chance to start this season, but was pulled for Deshaun Watson. He's got to be more consistent today. He gets that second opportunity to lead this team. He's got to be able to make throws down the field and use his legs, too. It's the same offense, but there is a different pizzazz without Watson there. He has to definitely carry this team for them to win. Let's talk about the B.C. Eagles quarterback. They've got a good one, too, in Tyler Murphy, the Florida transfer. And he is leading the nation's quarterbacks in rushing. With that said, he may have to go away from his strength today to get the win. Well, he's the most dynamic running quarterback in college football. But you're right. He's going to have to take the top off the defense at some point today. He's got to utilize play action and try to get those passes. He's been inc inconsistent so far at 56% completion percentage. He's got to make plays with his arm. If BC wants a chance against this great Clemson defense. It is a warm, windy homecoming day here. Chestnut Hill, 70 degrees as we get ready for kick. Clemson won the toss. They elected to defer to the second half. Tigers back in the top 25 for the first time since the loss to Florida State. It's also their first true road game since that loss. Miles Willis, David Dudek back deep. Bradley Pinion puts it in the air and puts it through the back of the end zone. So BC will start at the 25 yard line. And there is number two, Tyler Murphy. Top rushing quarterback in the FBS, 711 yards in six games. That's an average of 119 yeah. yards per game. He's been very impressive with his feet. Well, you know, Steve Adazio, the head coach of Boston College, he recruited him in Florida. He brought him here. What a great quarterback to kind of hold the fort down, Clay, as they're building. They're trying to get this team built up with young players, and he's been as dynamic as any running quarterback in college football. Yeah, it's a short-term fix, but so far it's been a pretty good fix. Murphy under center on the first play from scrimmage. He is a great play action passer. And he can really create with the feet, stays on his feet, and dives ahead to the 29 yard line. It's a gain of four. B.J. Goodson makes the tackle. The Clemson defense has been outstanding. They have forced a three and out on the first drive in every game this season. Defensive line has been a force led by number 50, Jarrett, number three, Beasley. These guys have to be blocked by BC's experienced offensive line if they're going to have any success today. So now Murphy 
out of the gun on second and six. Hands off to Hilleman. And John Hilleman is wrapped up immediately in the backfield. Stephon Anthony, the middle linebacker, the leading tackler, makes the stick. That's a loss of five. You see 42 here, Anthony. Watch this. He's just going to shoot the gap. This is a blitzing team, folks. Whether it's run or pass downs, they don't care. Brent Vendables is going to try to get into the backfield. Stephon Anthony's got seven and a half TFLs this season. Add another one to his. A penalty on the play. and. It's a late flag. I didn't see it. It, it goes against Clemson. And it's going to bring up second down and one. And so now Hilleman lines up in the backfield on second and one after the penalty. Quick throw. And again, that's going to be a loss on the play as Sherman Alston is the receiver for the Eagles. Another loss of two. McKenzie Alexander, the cornerback, makes the stop. So third down and about four here coming up. And you need every yard you can get on third down. They had it second and one. They get pushed back. Interesting to me, run the football. When it's second and one, third and one, I got to hand it off to my big running back, Hilleman. 215, 20 pounds. He's the guy I want to get the ball in his hands. 40% on third down are the Eagles. Here they go on third and three, opening series. Murphy running to his right, turns it up. First down, but there is a penalty marker on the play. Personal foul, chop block, offense number 32. 15-yard penalty, third down. So what looked like the first first down against this defense on an opening series, that's wiped out on the chop block. You see the running back. You cannot chop a player while he's engaged right there. You see the tackle on the defender. You cannot chop lock while he's being held up by the offensive player there. So again, this is a team now, Clay, number eight in the FBS and penalties a game. Only four game. They've got one early now. Well, yeah. That was a big one. Ian Silverman, like Tyler Murphy, transferred from Florida, where he started seven games the last couple of years. He was called for the penalty. Marcus Outlow. In the backfield, Murphy the throw, and it's caught by Alston, but he is hammered by Corinne Wiggins. There's Sam linebacker for a loss of one, brings it fourth down, and again, that defense stands tall on the opening series. It is. They had their opportunities that BC did on offense. They had it short down and distance, but a few earned passes got pushed back. The penalty, not a great start for this offense for BC. Yeah, Steve Adazio, the head coach for the Eagles, he's muttering to himself as Bradley Pinion, excuse me, Alex Howell bo boots it to the 30-yard line. They actually mark it at the 32-yard line, and that's where Clemson will go to work for the first time. Cole Stout, give another chance to run this offense. Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, said expectations for this offense remain the same, but this team certainly lost that dual threat dynamic. Gutty performance last week. He didn't even practice that for the Louisville game. Was that 50% capacity with his shoulder? Today, he's got to be instrumental in both run and pass. Hands off to Wayne Goldman on first down. It's a handful. This is a guy that Chad Morris wants to emerge as the feature back. Gain of four, second down and six for Clemson. Four and two, three and one in the ACC. Three straight wins since that loss to Florida State. Goldman again, and this time he is met at the line of scrimmage. Little or no gain as Connor Wojak, the nose tackle, big number 90, comes in to make the stop. They rotate a lot of guys on that deep front, Anthony. They, they keep it moving. They try to get the offensive line off their kilter with different positions. You see him right now running around this amoeba look. Just side to Sean Watson on the sideline with his hand in that splint. A marker down on the field. Referee today is Dennis Hennigan. False start. Offense number 58. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's the center, Ryan Norton. There you see a. Uh, the starting quarterback now on your right, and the freshman 
starter the last three games for the Tigers, Deshaun Watson, who had surgery Monday. Four screws put in that finger in his right hand. Third and 11 now after the penalty for the Tigers on their opening series. See the BC defense. They're going to bring pressure here on third and long. Stout steps up. Slides down well short of the first down. And the Tigers go three and out. It's a good job. BC's defense setting the tone. Listen, they're no slouches either, Clay. They're in the top ten in overall defense also. And they're not the most athletic. They're light on players. Only got 26 total defensive players. But they play with effort and they play hard. And that's been the difference so far this season. Bradley Pinion on to punt again. Sherman Alston back to return. And he's going to make a fair catch here at the 23 yard line. Vic Beasley in that Clemson defense, which ranks sixth in the nation. Coming out when we return here to Chestnut Hill, no score early. Two teams with very good defenses and both teams going three and out on their opening series as we look at the impact players going with two freshmen with BC Hilleman the running back we talked about him a big workhorse running back they love this in this power game Austin another freshman jet sweeps reverses get his hand ball football in the hands quickly Anthony at linebacker and Beasley folks this guy's the most dynamic pass rusher in college football they have to put a hat on him if they're gonna have any success in the passing game today at his school record 29th career sack last week he has eight this year he thinks he can get to 20 this season Tyler Murphy and the Eagles offense going back to work Sherman Alston they're going to try and get the ball to him and get him in space a lot in this game he picks up five he's not very big five six 163 pound true freshman yeah, he's not big at all, but he is quick and explosive when he has that ball. You see there early with the jet sweep, and you saw them run at Vic Beasley. To me, that's going to be one of his keys to this running game. I think they're going to go right at number three in the power run game. Second down and five. They go back to the run. That's a first down for Miles Willis. 53 running plays per game, the fourth most in the nation. They average 316 rushing yards per game. You can see why. They open up a lot of doors. You're right. It starts up front. The offensive lineman grinding them out. Look at that gap right there. Great job getting to the second level by this offensive line. Number 75, Silverman, does a good job on that play. That's what they need to do if they want to set the tempo at the line of scrimmage against this vaunted defensive line. Willis comes to the sideline. Sherman Alston bounces into the backfield next to Murphy. They option it to Sherman Alston. And he's corralled and brought down by Robert Smith, the strong safety, and Tony Stewart. It's a gain of five. Last five games, the Clemson rush defense has been outstanding. The Boston College rushing offense has been lights out as well. So something has to give here today. It's going to be a slug fest at the line of scrimmage. If you like bruising football, you got to watch the guys in the trenches today. John Hilleman in the backfield. Play fake to him. Murphy to a wide open man, and Bordner dropped the football. Josh Bordner, the backup quarterback the last three seasons who moved to wide receiver and has been playing very well, is kicking himself right now. That's unfortunate. He runs a little angle route out of the backfield right in his hands, and I've seen him drop some balls. It's been a tough transition for him, going from quarterback to tight end, really to watch that football in. Easy pitch and catch, but they miss out on a huge opportunity, the ones they got to have, Clay, in this game. He leads the team in receiving yards, and that might have been six. And now a third and five. Now a timeout called for timeout. by BC. In college. Tyler Murphy comes to the sideline. To talk about this third and five, and I'm going to step aside as well.
ESPNU College Football is brought to you by Infinity, luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. Famous Gasset Hall here on the campus of Boston College. We're at Alumni Stadium. No score here in the first quarter. 8.52 to go. There is Clemson defensive coordinator Brent Venables in his third season. And his defense has been great this year, especially on third down. They're third in the nation. Opponents converting just 25 percent. They've already forced one BC three and out. Third and four for the Eagles here at their own 46 yard line. Tyler Murphy on a shotgun. Pressure and set. There's Tony Stewart. The veteran linebacker having his best season as a Clemson Tiger did not play last week because of a hamstring injury. They're happy to have him back healthy today. Yeah, you see Stewart right here. He's just going to bring a blitz. Look, Venables is not afraid to bring pressure. When he sees those lanes, those linebackers are going to come in. That's what they do. They're aggressive. They trust and have accountability for all their players on defense, and that's a huge reason why they've been successful. Alex Howell with a booming punt puts it at the five yard line it checks up and it's going to be dead at the nine. Alex Howe flipping the field for the Eagles while we have a moment. Let's say hi to Matt Schick for the first time. Hey guys here's your conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper in the Big 12 things are getting very interesting in Morgantown Clinton Trick in his eighth straight 300 yard passing game extending his own school record that to Mario Alford West Virginia up 41 27 with five and a half to go Ooh, Matt you should see the big smile on my partner's face right now a former West Virginia Mountaineer. Hey, we know what Baylor could do at the end of the game. Let's let's not bring them bad luck yet. <laughs> and they don't need a lot of time to do it. Adam Choice running on first down, but not running very far. Connor Wojak and Malachi Moore combine on the stop. That's going to be a loss on the play of one yard, second and 11. This is Clemson offense with Cole Stout as the signal caller today. A slow starter so far. Adam Choice, team's leading rusher, stays in the backfield. Four receivers set. From the end zone, stop, right out of time, throws it and got rid of it. Connor Wojak was breathing down his neck. Stout got it away just in time, but now it's third and long. Wojak isn't the fastest player, but you see him right here. Watch this move. It's all effort with this Boston College defense. Just working the offensive line. It's been a struggle up front for Clemson the entire season. See if they can hold up. There's Choice, and he's got the first down. Adam Choice got the hot hand last week, carried 16 times against Louisville. They'd like to get him going. Yeah, they really like their backfield with those two running backs for sure. Wasting no time. Flare it out into the flat. There's our Tavis Scott. Four star recruit. The Clemson. This spring he's the Tigers leading receiver. He picks up four second down at six. They try to get as many as 80 snaps per game. That's the target for offensive coordinator Chad Morris. This is an offense that didn't score an offensive touchdown for the first time under Morris last week. Stout. That was a designed run play it looked like and it didn't look very good. Yeah it didn't look clean on that one there and again and that's the you know no practice last week. See coach Morris he's he's pretty disappointed right here. Just just get off the same page as your running back and that's the reps that he hasn't taken since Deshaun Watson's been in the, in the game playing. Remember Cole Stout injured that AC joint his left shoulder. It's still not 100 percent. He can't afford to take too many shots to that shoulder today. Third and four. Stout sets in the pocket throws a strike to the 40 yard line and Mike Williams makes the catch. 
He is their big play guy. And he's one of our impact players today. Give him 16 yards. Yeah, he leads the country, not with 15, but now with 16 catches over 20 yards. Choice, we talked about him in the backfield. He's going to be the change-up guy. But when you look at BC, they're going to have to be stout with Kai's at the linebacker position and, and, and Malik at the defensive end. There's Choice again. He picks up four, so second down and six coming up. This defense for Boston College ranks eighth in the nation. Allowing 290 yards per game just behind the Clemson defense. Choice and Gallman both in the backfield. And Choice is in the Wildcat. Fakes the handoff. Now runs toward the sideline and gets dumped for a loss. We knew that Choice might take some snaps in the Wildcat because of Cole Stout not being a great runner. Well, you're right. It's it's the lack of Watson, and now they have Choice and Gallman in the backfield, and it looks like here Choice might have sprained his ankle uh, as he carried this football. Again, BC's all over it. They're not phased or tricked at all. Great tackle by Dominique Williams, number nine. It's a loss of three, so now third and nine as Choice limps over to the training table. Clemson two for two on third down on this drive as Stout comes back in. And now he wants a timeout. Both teams have called a first quarter timeout. We're scoreless as Clemson has the football here in Boston. No score here in Chestnut Hill. Clemson facing a third and nine after a timeout. We stay in the ACC tonight. Georgia Tech, North Carolina. College football primetime presented by Five Hour Energy. The Yellow Jackets coming out their first loss last week to Duke. And knocked them out of the top 25. North Carolina 0-3 in the ACC. The Tar Heels need one bad. Adam Choice. Over there, they're still looking at him. It appeared they were attending to his knee. True freshman running back for the Tigers out of the timeout. Stout in the shotgun, third and nine. This is DJ Howard with the catch, looking for him along the sideline, and there isn't much. It'll bring up fourth down as this Eagles defense. Continues to look sharp here in the early going. Yeah, Clemson looks still like there's a little hangover from last week's game against Louisville, a little rusty. And that's what we've seen on tape play. Bubble screens, slip screens, throws to the running back. They haven't really challenged anybody vertically. That'll be key in this game as we go on. Bradley Pinion to punt. Sherman Alston, one of nine true freshmen returning punts in the country. He's back, standing at the 15-yard line, looking at it. Pressure coming, and he calls for the fair catch at the five. All right, the Clemson defense, very stout as well. Well, they've already bought blitzes early, but Brent Venables, the defense quarter, is not scared. Look at the slot linebacker here. That's Wiggins off the edge. You're going to bring pressure right on the running back's face there. They're not scared to do it either way. you got the strong safety. Number 18, Jadar Johnson, right up the middle. They don't account for him. Again, disrupting the quarterback. And you can't forget about the corner, right? Gary Peters coming off the edge. Big strip sack there. That's what this defense has been predicated on early in the season. Special teams and defense, the key to that win last week against Louisville for the Tigers as Hilleman takes it ahead in that huge red zone stand against the Cardinals. That was impressive, and they needed that. And I'll tell you what, they just make up for great athleticism at all the positions. Their defensive line, stout, long, 6'4", 6'5", guys, 270, 75 pounds. I mean, Beasley, really, he's the smallest guy at yeah. the defensive line position. Steve Adazio, the head coach for Boston College, saying this week that this is the best defense he's faced since Alabama in 09 when he was the offensive coordinator at Florida. He put the tape in this week and said he was scared to death. <laughs> Second and nine, play clock winding down to get the snap off. Murphy hands it off to John Hilleman. And again, he is a great play action deceiver. You, you always have to make sure where the football is if you're a defense against Tyler Murphy. 
I call it triple threat, and that's the extra threat. That ball skill level, the being able to fake with the running back, sell it for a long time, and trust your blockers, and that the defensive line is going to bite on it. He does an exceptional job at those things. Third down and six. DC hasn't converted yet. End around. Here comes Alston. And Clemson was ready for him. Fourth down. J. Ron Curse leading the way on that tackle. And Corey Crawford, 93, in there as well. Yeah, Curse is in the box. You see him on the right hand of your screen. He was he was the guy that saved the touchdown at the end of the Louisville game. You're not going to trick him. Very smart player. He's got great range. 6'4", 210 clay. He's a playmaker. And there's Crawford, the senior out of Columbus, Georgia. As the Eagles get ready to punt it away for the third time today, Alex Howell from just out of the end zone. That's a good kick. At the 39-yard line, there is Humphreys, the reigning ACC Special Teams Player of the Week, who was unable to get a return. What a game it's going to be tonight on ABC, 8 Eastern time. Unbeaten's battle with playoff implications on the line. Number five, Notre Dame. Number two, Florida State. A lot of distractions because of Jameis Winston again this week. Who do you like in this one? I'll tell you what, if, if ever Golston Notre Dame wants to have a chance, it can't be all Golston. They got to get some running back production, get balanced. Folston's got it. The running back from Notre Dame has to get involved in this football game. There's Artavis Scott with the catch. Spria making the tackle. It's going to bring up second down in about six. This is the first true road game for the Irish. And Florida State have won 22 straight games going back a couple of seasons. There's DJ Howard. A two yards short of the first down out to about the 47. Dominique Williams. In the tackle, it's a gain of four. So third down and manageable here for Clemson. They get over the ball very quickly. Right now, the Tigers winning the battle of field position, but that's about the only edge I see in this game right now. The two teams that control the clock try to be efficient. Goldman hit behind the line of scrimmage. And that brings up fourth down. When the dust clears, there's Shea E. Adebayo, the transfer from Columbia. Yeah, he's right here on the screen. And listen, if you don't block him, he's going to be he's going to be making those tackles in the backfield. you got to account for guys like that. Defensive input does a great job of pinching down, securing that tackle, and forcing a punt for Clemson. That is the third tackle for loss for this Eagles defense. Alston lets it bounce. And they can't keep it out of the end zone. And that's going to be the last play of the first quarter already. It's, a, it's flying. Not a lot of reps for either team. Who's going to make that third down play to move the chains? That'll be key moving forward. Eagles will have it at their own 20 when we start the second. No score here. The defensive battle in the ACC so far. Well, no score here as we get ready to start the second quarter. Boston College will start at its own 20. There's Tyler Murphy likely to break the ACC record for rushing yards by a quarterback set by Clemson's Woody Dantzler. In 2001, he had over 1,000 yards that season, but held to minus eight in the first quarter. Here he tries to throw nothing downfield, and he's sacked. Tavares Barnes with the sack. There you see Woody Dantzler, the record holder, Tyler Murphy, already in the top ten, but he was held to minus eight yards on two carries in the first quarter. Yeah, those sacks have obviously taken their toll, and, uh, you know, they're trying to get this passing game off the play action, and right now Clemson's doing a good job of manning up their wide receivers. There's 20 yards of total offense for the Eagles in the first quarter. Deep handoff this time to Hilleman. They'll get a couple. This is a very young Boston College team. 
least experienced team in the ACC. 48% of the roster freshmen and sophomores. Still, they've got 15 grad students, which is tied for the most in the country with Alabama, and five on the O-line. They might not be the best, but they're the smartest by far in the ACC. BC 0 for 3 on third down. Murphy in trouble again and dumped again. Barnes, his second sack on the series. I'll tell you, the depth at the defensive line is, is impressive. Tavares Barnes, you see him standing up down here in his stats. He's going to come off the edge. And like you said, it's about beating the offensive lineman and getting to the quarterback. Last week he had a spectacular game uh, with a fumble recovery for a touchdown. He's been a very dangerous player when they rotate the defensive line. Adam Humphreys returned a punt for a touchdown last week against Louisville. He is slippery, gets to the 49-yard line. Good field position again for Clemson to start this series. Tavares Barnes recovered a fumble in the end zone in the game against Louisville in the first quarter last week. Here in the first half, he's already got two sacks for this vaunted Tigers defense. ESPN is your home of the new college football playoff. Yeah, you, you should see the buttons running right now. <laughs> No score here with 13.03 to go first half. Clemson starting at midfield. Their best starting field position today. Wayne Gallman. He's dropped for a loss. That's the kind of game we've got here today, folks. Two very good defenses as you're looking at Stephen Daniels, who makes the tackle. When you look at the weapons that they have at the wide receiver position, you got to think at some point they got to let Cole air one out to one of these big receivers. If I'm going to pick one, it's going to be Mike Williams at the top of the screen, number seven. He's got deep threat ability. He averages over 20 yards per catch. I'll send Sam Cooper the tight end in motion. Stout sets in the pocket, throws it to the far sideline. There is Williams. Now you nailed it, partner. He makes the catch at the 31-yard line and puts Clemson fairly deep now into Boston College territory. Yeah, he runs a slant, post, corner. And again, he's so big. He's 6'4". He's the kind of guy that you can get used to at the target because he's so big at the wide receiver position. And now they flip it out to Artavis Scott, who does a great pirouette along that far sideline to get it inside the 15-yard line after the catch. Now they are hitting those short passing routes to see Scott catch it really a, a elusive wide receiver they like to compare him to Sammy Watkins he's done great job and he has stepped out a few times in that white line Coleman gets away to the end zone touchdown Some poor tackling there by BC. It's a 17 yard touchdown run for Goldman. And the Tigers get on the board first. That's a little more what we expect out of Clemson's offense. A big pass, another quick screen, and there's Goldman. Jumps through the hole. Great blocking by the wide receivers on the outside. Williams there with the key block. And, and Goldman does the rest. And that's what head coach Dabo Sweeney wants to see out of his football team in this offense. Hammond Lake hip. Comes on for the extra point. And the junior makes it seven to nothing. Couple of successful passing plays for Cole Stout. And then they give it to the ground game. The excellent job blocking. This is what we expect of this Clemson offense in this game. Up seven nothing. Clemson's had a thousand yard rusher six of the last eight seasons. They haven't established anyone this year. Maybe it'll be Wayne Gallman, who just scored his first rushing touchdown of the season. A 17 yard run to cap a four play 50 yard drive in a minute and 21 seconds. And in case you missed it, the video of that TD is now posted on the Sports Center app available on your mobile device. A little more of what we expect from a Clemson offense. They move quickly, they move efficiently, and it ends up in the end zone. Pinion 
Kicks it to the one. Miles Willis on the return to the 20, 25, 30. Out to midfield. Miles Willis. Tackled by Gary Peters, but not before he brings one back 50 yards. You see Miles Willis, he's in the backfield, and now he's returning kicks. And listen, when you block him up, you just pick the seam and you run. And that's the best thing about it right there on that play. Huge momentum swing right there after a big score. That's what BC needed. Let's see if their offense can follow. The sophomore from Conyers, Georgia, had a 98-yard kickoff return touchdown last year against New Mexico State, and I thought he was gone for a moment there. John Hilleman, a good run for the 45 of Clemson. And BC in business here now after getting down. Second down and six. One thing about this defense at Clemson, regardless of where the offense starts, they've been stout every single game they've played. And this is another opportunity for them to set the tone if BC can't get their offense going. First time in plus territory for the Eagles. As Murphy gives to Willis. Willis probably still catching his breath from that kickoff return. Pretty much stopped in his tracks. It'll bring up third down and a long four. They love to be in this opportunity right here. Talk about almost less than 25% conversion rate for the opponents against Clemson's defense. And this is where they got to put it in that arm of Tyler Murphy. Get him out of the pocket. I give him an advantage here. If the pass isn't there, he's got a chance to possibly run. Tyler Murphy. Today, two for three. Negative three yards passer. Sideline warning. Clemson got a sideline warning. They're getting excited over there. They got to get back, Clay. <laughs> Over for 4 on third down today. There is Murphy trying to take off, and he's hit. Deshaun Williams, the big defensive tackle, drills him for a loss of two. Yeah, it's about shedding blocks. You see over the right guard. They actually do a loop technique. He comes around the right guard. Brady Jarrett pushes and penetrates his man, leaves a wide open space for him to get around, Clay. Great play, and that's what they do on the defensive line. They shift, they move, they make it tough for this offensive line of BC. Williams deflected Louisville's fourth down pass to end the game last week. Forces the fourth three and out for the Eagles today. This is going to get into the end zone. Touchback. So Clemson gets the ball back. The offense was very sharp and efficient on its last series. Well, if I'm a quarterback for Clemson, why not throw to my 6'4 receiver? You see Mike Williams out here, wide open, great job. And again, get it outside to my fastest receiver. You see Scott, nice blocks on the outside by the wide receivers to spring him. And then you're running back. If you give him a crease, this young man, the redshirt freshman, Galman, he can make it happen in the running game, and he showed it right there. Cole Stout. He wants to be a senior leader. And he certainly showed that even after being demoted. Grateful for his second chance to run this offense. Gives it to Gallman who scored the touchdown in the last series. And, and really what they're looking for from Stout, Anthony, is to manage the game today, not to do anything that could cause Clemson to lose this contest. I think you're right. And the tempo, I, that last drive, the tempo was a little faster. I think that works to the advantage of Clemson. It makes the defense be on their heels, and it showed success on that last series. Stout, back pedal, penalty flag comes in, and Gallman is hit. We'll bring up third and long, but we'll see what the penalty's about. Initial indication is a hold on the Tigers. I don't think Dennis Hennigan could be more emphatic, but we still haven't had the official word. Here it comes. Holding offense number 58. The penalty is declined. Third down. Ryan Norton on the hold. And they're going to decline it because it's third and 13. Deshaun Watson, again watching this game from the sideline today because of that broken finger. This is Cole Stout's offense to run. They've got a third and long here. 
See that BC defense with its ears pinned back. Yeah, that everybody's standing up. They call that an Abiba defense. Not setting the stone for the offensive line to figure out where they're at. Here comes the pressure. Deep handoff. Goldman stepped out of one tackle, but barely gets back to the original line of scrimmage before Steven Daniels and Mike Strezak combine on the stop. It's fourth down. A little bit undersized at the defensive line. You see them standing up, moving around, doing different things to get this really this inconsistent offensive line of Clemson off balance. And that's been key so far. Great job of forcing the punt. So good against the runner, those BC Eagles. They're allowing just under 100 yards per game. Their only letdown this season was that pit game where they gave up over 300 yards rushing. But the very next week, Held USC to 20 yards on the ground and pulled an upset. They're trying to upset number 24 Clemson today, but they're down seven to nothing here with eight and a half before halftime. Clemson has done a great job defensively today against the top rushing quarterback in the country, Tyler Murphy. BC should have had a big play in the first quarter, but Josh Bordner dropped a pass. And then Murphy has done nothing with his feet. Five carries for minus 18 yards so far. You gotta pass protect. You gotta make a play when the kid throws it. I mean, listen, Murphy can't do everything with his legs. They don't throw a lot, Clay, but when they do, they gotta make sure they catch the football and help him out. That's one of the reasons why his completion percentage is so low, the big drops. He's also been sacked three times by the Clemson Tigers. Of seven senior starters on this defense. There is Murphy making a play with his feet. To the 44-yard line of Clemson, T.J. Green finally made the tackle, but it's a gain of 19. Yeah, they don't block Beasley. They get the running back to go to him, and they go the other way in the, in the perimeter. Tyler Murphy does a great job. If he gets a seam now, he's not going to miss it. That's why he's the leading rusher as a quarterback in college football. Just the second. Boston College first down today. Saw the great numbers for Murphy this year on the ground. He keeps it here. And he'll get a few more. And another flag comes in. Personal foul. Face mask, defense number 26, 15-yard penalty, first down. It's on Gary Peters, senior corner. These are the mistakes and plays you can have to give BC that momentum. And right there, you can't do that. And again, let go of it. Why is he still pulling on it? To me, that, that's a selfish act, Clay. That's a selfish penalty. As a defensive player, you know, I wouldn't be happy if I'm the coordinator if I see that, especially the fact that he kept continue to hold on to the face mask. Be smart there. Don't put your, your team in a bind. And here's BC speeding it up. Play fake. Wide open and Sherman Austin touchdown. A 26 yard touchdown reception with that little keg of dynamite, Sherman Alston. You see him right here. He's going to want a reel out. And the offense needs to get him the ball in different ways. And when you run the ball effectively and you got safeties and corners peeking in the backfield looking for the run, you're going to find receivers open. And right there, they choose the running back out of the backfield. Great play design for Ryan Day, the offensive coordinator. And the extra point is good by Mike Knoll, and we are tied. At seven apiece with 7.29 to go before halftime. Let's go to the studio and get an update with Matt. Yeah, Clay, update you on what's going on in Tuscaloosa. Fourth and goal, T.J. Yeldon, second touchdown of the day. Alabama rolling 17-0. Ten first downs all the game last week, 12 so far in this game. Yeah, you know, I think Alabama's going to have to score 100 points today <laughs> to keep their fan base happy. They're never happy. Yeah. Nick Saban wasn't very happy last week either after uh, the criticism. A win's a win. Yeah, whether, that's what I think. Whether it's 2 nothing, 3 nothing, 100 to nothing, I'll take a W all day. Clemson, neither team actually, can give the other team 
extra breaks, and that's what Clemson did on that Boston College series with that stupid penalty. The stupid penalty, and then you're not ready. They speed the tempo up. I love that by BC. Really, both teams have been successful with the increased tempo. They catch each other sleeping, and they both score touchdowns. Sherman Alston, five foot six, 163 pounds. That's his first receiving touchdown this year. He's got a couple of rushing touchdowns. They're going to try and find ways to get him the football today. That time, they do it through the air. And Murphy with just his fourth passing touchdown this season. T.J. Green is leveled as he steps across the 15-yard line. Great coverage there by John Johnson. Tennessee Ole Miss, Missouri, Florida, and the big one tonight on ABC at 8 Eastern time. Notre Dame, Florida State, both undefeated. Huge college football playoff implications. Are you driving us back quick to the hotel to get on that TV to, to watch that game, or am I driving? Uh, you better drive. I'll drive you. Yeah, you're right. I'm a better guy with the directions. Yeah, I've got too many tickets, too. <laughs> All right, Cole Stout. There you see his numbers. Nothing fantastic, but he does have one engineered touchdown drive to his credit today. There he hits Mike Williams. It's going to be close to a first down. We'll see uh, if they give it to him. Yes, they do. Cole Stout was Taj Boyd's backup for three years. Finally became the starter this year as a senior, only to lose the job to a freshman in week three at Florida State. He was demoted right during the game. A running play. It's Coleman. Hit at the line of scrimmage and forced back. Steven Daniels, the middle linebacker, had a breakout game last week. Had a sack, a quarterback hurry, and a fumble recovery against North Carolina State. Yeah, look right there in the middle of your screen, 52. If you don't put a hat on him, play, this kid's going to make the tackle. He's a tackle machine. A lot of these players for BC, hard-nosed, tough players. Not the greatest speed, but they're around the football. Very good instincts, a smart football team. Handoff on second and ten. It's Goldman. Get a chunk of it. And it'll bring up third down at about six as Kais makes the tackle. Stout uh, accepted that demotion from the head coach, Dabo Sweeney. And he appreciated that. And this transition back to him as the starter made it much simpler because he's been a good teammate. And he hits Williams here for a first down. Again, Williams has been the go-to guy in tough spots as a late flag comes in. And they got the defense offside, so either way, they'll probably take the catch there. But he's 6'4". You've got to go to the guy. He's a playmaker. Offside, defense lined up in the neutral zone. Penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. So it's a pickup of 15 yards. Spotted at the 46-yard line. Play action. Stout taking a deep shot for Williams. Some incidental contact in the secondary. Got tied up with Manny Espria. Well, they kind of run a little Statue of Liberty-esque play there. But he had the crossing route. Humphreys was wide open over the middle of the field. You see it here. There's Humphreys. He's open. Good defense, a little hand check there. No call, I like it. They're battling. Williams gets off balance. They took their shot, Clay. Williams was really developing a great chemistry with Watson before the injury. And Stout trying to hit him today. And Stout, again, he doesn't have that dynamic running game that Deshaun Watson had. He is brought down after a short game, so third and eight. And you just saw him wind his shoulder up there. So, again, that's something he's fighting through, that pain. See Deshaun Watson there, incredible athlete, huge playmaker. You talked about his stats since he's been a starter for this team, been incredible. Almost 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns in six games for Watson, but he can only watch from the sideline today. His homecoming crowd trying to get behind this defense. Third down and eight. The Tigers want to pass. Stout to the sideline, and he overshoots the intended man, Scott. Fourth down. Again, they bring that amoeba look on defense. They bring the pressure. Stout's really only got one place to go outside, one-on-one. -on -one. See the top of your screen. 
Scott trying to beat him with speed. Stop. Can't quite drop it down into him. Great stop by Boston College to force the punt. Don Brown, the defensive coordinator for BC, has to be happy with his unit today. Former UMass coach has forced the fifth punt for the Tigers here in the first half. Fair catch called for at the 16-yard line by Alston. When we come back, BC on offense, Tyler Murphy. He's a great runner, but he's got a touchdown pass today, which tied this game at seven. Magic here in the studio. Coming up at halftime, Kevin Carter will join me. We'll look at the first half. We'll also look at a couple of upsets in the Big 12 earlier today with some major playoff ramifications. The tide continues to roll at home. We'll look around at the rest of the top 25. See you now. And we'll see you in under five minutes, Matt. There's Steve Adazio. He was telling you and I this week that we cannot win this game in the first half, but we sure could lose it. We've got to weather the storm. Ball security is going to be huge. We've got to get this thing to the fourth quarter where we have a chance to win it. And right now, that plan is playing out as BC takes over here. Their own 16-yard line. Murphy, though, nowhere to go. It's going to be a loss of three on the play. The plan is right where they want it to be. And, of course, in this situation here, listen, let's not forget about Vic Beasley. He's been a little quiet. They've had a hat on him. Don't let it, him be the guy that changes the complexion of this game. Try to get a first down, move the chains, and if you don't, punt it back, get that field position, make Clemson earn it. I think that's the biggest thing you can put on their offense right now. They're not a one-team, quick, explosive play hitter right now. It's Cole Stout at the quarterback position. Get the field position back and continue to play play like you said your team's offensive numbers all that impressive 136 for Clemson today 65 yards of total offense for BC handoff to Hillman the big true freshman who ran 27 times last week he's been the workhorse as of late for this BC running game doesn't get much and a third and long coming up for the Eagles this is an ideal situation for them. And Coach Adazio said, listen, we're going to have some three and outs. There's no question about it. This defense is way too good. The question is, do you try to force it on these third downs? Tyler Murphy must be a smart quarterback. He's done it so far. But if it's not there, use your legs and yeah. try to get out of the situation. And you said punting is not a bad thing today. Murphy, Dutch throw it deep. He had a man wide open, Shaquem Phillips. But they can't hook up. That looks somewhat like that play on the first play that came last week against North Carolina State where Murphy and Phillips failed to click. Well, you got Shaquette Phillips making an inside route, going inside the defender, and he's throwing the ball outside. So you have a miscommunication there. But again, he gets the ball to the outside. No one else can catch it except his receiver, and they live with a punt. Rugby style for Alex Howe. And bounces at the 37 and rolls inside the 30 out of bounds. Now get your NFL Sunday started at 10 a.m. on ESPN with Sunday NFL Countdown presented by Snickers. Boomer and the gang providing all the latest news and updates from around the league right up until kickoff. And don't forget about Fantasy Football Now presented by Papa John's at 11 on ESPN2. Here in New England, the Patriots beat your old team, the they Jets, uh, Thursday night. The hell of a game, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was good. They get Geno Smith right. He's probably excited today, though. Big win for WVU. That might lift him up for the rest of the season. How about Will that? You, you're going to shoehorn that final well, that, into every to pick, you got to pick the young man weekend. up. Why not? West Virginia with a big upset. Matt Schick will talk about it at halftime. That was dropped. Jermon Hopper, who dropped a likely touchdown pass last week, for the Tigers, leaves that one on the turf. And Manny Espria hit him hard to boot. I mean, he throws a strike, stout right on his chest. You got to catch the football. And like you said, drop footballs have been a little bit of an issue for Clemson. They got the sophomore uh, in, in Williams. They got a sophomore in Hopper. They got a freshman in Scott. Those things are going to happen with the young wide receivers. 3.16 to go here before halftime. Each team with two timeouts remaining. And that drop play kills the tempo, which yeah. Clemson needs to be successful. Last three passes for Stout incomplete. That last one, not his fault. Fakes a pass to the left, comes back right to Gorman. Wayne Gorman will get three. 
as Daniels is quick there to wrap him up. So another third down and fairly long for the Tigers. Kalen Davis is right tackle. Can't get out of the way. He's trying to run around him, over him. He doesn't find a way to get him to get. This is an ideal situation. The third and longs make Cole Stout put a throw out there. This defense is going to man it up each receiver and bring this amoeba pressure that they've shown all day. Clemson three of eight on third down today. Stout has time over the middle. Man open caught at the 43. Adam Humphreys. The dangerous return man, also the third leading receiver on the team with 17 yards and a big first down. He's got over 100 catches in his career, Clay. He's an accountable receiver. No matter where you put the football, if it's in the vicinity, he's going to catch it. Stout now 11 of 15. He's over 100 yards passing. He spun that one right in there. Tries again over the middle. And again, it's complete. The tight end, Jordan Leggett. He is the top pass catching tight end through the first six weeks. They really like Leggett. He just runs around Kyle's there and you got that strong safety coming down. Tight end's got to be able to catch the football. He's been hot and cold all year but that's a big catch by Leggett the tight end to the 34 yard line of BC after that 14 yard reception. Under two minutes to go before half. Play fake. Stout looking downfield again. This time he's in trouble and he's going to be sacked. Truman Goodapple, the sophomore out of Harrison, Ohio, gets Boston College's first sack today. How about those apples right there? That BC young man right to get in that rush, beaten the left tackle. It's a good job there. I love it. I had to get it in. We're in Boston. Come on, Clay. Look at you. You're dying laughing. I love it. You were chomping at the bit to get that in. <laughs> Gorman in the backfield at second and 12. Clemson loved to take the lead here late in the first half. Play clock goes inside of five. Stout to the flat. Arteva Scott using the screen gets to the 30. And John Johnson steps up, making his second career start. Gets the tackle. Started last week after Bryce Jones was dismissed by Boston College. Clemson. And Clemson will call a timeout with 51 seconds to go before the half. Clemson one timeout left. College football continuing tonight on ESPN at 7. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels, Ole Miss, and Tennessee. And then Stanford and Arizona at 10.30. There's a look at the top 10. Ole Miss, their best start in 52 years. As you predicted, Mississippi State, though, jump to the top of the pack. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they're the team to beat right now. They, they've gone out there and done it consistently week in and week out. Baylor, they're going to drop, obviously, with the big loss. The huge game tonight, Florida State, Notre Dame. And watch out now. Auburn's still hanging around. Alabama's still hanging around. Which one of those teams are going to continue to chop wood and get those Ws? Whoever loses the Florida State-Notre Dame game tonight, can they still find themselves in the college football playoff. I think Florida State can. I don't know about Notre Dame. And if Notre Dame wins this game, in my opinion, it would be by a few points or the last drive, something at the end of the game. I just don't know if they're strong enough to go into Tallahassee and knock them off by two or three touchdowns, which would then push Florida State out because of their weak schedule. After this game, Florida State doesn't have a ranked opponent left on their schedule. Really, their last chance to impress the committee, too. Yep. So third down and five for the Tigers. Play fake. Stout looking downfield. Comes short to J.J. McCullough, the tight end. His sixth catch of the year. It's good for 10 yards and a first down. They stop the clock to move the chains. Now it starts to wind again inside 40 seconds. And Clemson still has a timeout remaining. Here's Stout dancing. Looking to step up. Now he's hit from behind and dropped near the line of scrimmage. There's Kevin Kavalik, the sophomore defensive end, as Clemson calls a timeout, their last timeout, with 26 seconds to go. Coming up on the halftime report, a big upset in the Big 12. It's Virginia doing a number, and we'll talk about it at the break. Number seven.
Alabama, who's been struggling offensively, rolling today. And we'll talk more about Notre Dame and Florida State. Who do you like in that game? Well, you know, I got to go with Florida State at home. And, you know, with all the adversity they've had, they just seem to shake it off. And they go play football on Saturdays. That's been the biggest thing that I've noticed with that football team. And it's going to be a have to be more than just Everett Golson in this game. Somebody else has to step up. If it's just him, it's going to be tough. Comes your way at 8 Eastern time on ABC. Well, this is kind of turning into what we expected. A game that's been very defensive in nature. But Clemson has a chance to take the lead here just ahead of halftime. They've got a fairly good field goal kicker in Ammon Lakehip, who was clutch last week. Here's Stout, though, going for the end zone. Williams, there's contact. Both the defender and the receiver go down, but no flag as Manny Espria gets tied up with Williams. And it lands incomplete. This is close now. The corner gets his head back. You see they're both pushing each other. That's a good, good no call by the referees. They're battling outside. Now, Mike Williams is the guy. He's the guy they're trying to get it to. It's a challenge for this BC team. And Cole Stout right now, it's got to be smart. Third and long. they got a field goal. Don't force one here. Stout eludes the pressure. Stumbles for the first down. No timeouts remaining. They do stop the clock to move the chain. they got to clock it. Clock begins to wind. Plenty of time. And Stout slams it to the turf with six seconds to go. That's a great effort by him. And he was kind of running around. He had been in that situation a while. And last week, they messed up the same thing right before the half. I'm sure they went over this multiple times. Right here, the pocket. He's got just enough speed and moves to get through. Makes a big play. And smart enough to get on the football. Everybody on the sideline was saying, clock, clock, clock. And they finally got it done properly. Yeah, they left points on the field last week just ahead of half. Dabo Sweeney was very upset. And now Ammon Lakip comes on to attempt a 23-yarder to give the Tigers the lead before the break. Out of the hold of Corbin Jenkins. And it's good. And Clemson goes in front. I'll tell you though, for BC that's a win. They hold them to a field goal 10-7. If you would have scripted this out and asked Coach Adazio if that's what he wanted he would take that all day. Low scoring game here in Boston College 10-7 Clemson at the half. It's been a busy Saturday in college football already. Let's get up to date with Matt and Kevin in the studio. Thank you guys. So Clemson, as opposed to last week does capitalize at the end with a field goal right before the end of the half. 10-7 Clemson head to that one again. Two of the four remaining Power Five undefeated teams. Clemson. Mr. Gallman into the end zone for the touchdown. Clemson up 10-7 at the half. To win the SEC East. Cole Stout, he can move around a little bit. Look at him go. Close to 20 yards rushing there in the first half. Set up the field goal to end the half. That's where we stand now. 125 years ago, Thomas Green Clemson established Clemson University to make a difference. As Clemson students, faculty, staff, and alumni, this is still our charge. To find new sources of energy, to create better medical implants, to build greener and safer cars, to power big ideas and big research, to teach, to learn, to serve, to win. Today, Mr. Clemson would be proud of the difference Tigers make every day. Jordan Leggett, he's got it. Making a good catch over the middle. Clemson up 10-7 at half on Boston College. Up Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. It's homecoming here at Boston College. Beautiful fall day in New England. Good football game too, 10-7. Number 24, Clemson on top of the Eagles at the half, alongside Anthony Becht 
I'm Clay Matvick, and this game has turned into the defensive struggle we thought it very well could turn into. I, I love it, a defensive battle. I'm an offensive guy, but I love great tackling. A lot of TFLs in this game. Both teams have seven apiece, so, so they're getting a good read on their offenses that they're going against. And, you know, to me, it's who's going to come out in the second half and get those big plays. It might be two or three plays that they got to go out there and make those big uh, opportunities. Clemson has a very good defense, top ten in the nation. And... Murphy did get the one touchdown pass, but they have certainly shut down his legs. Well, there's no question they've sacked him, they've gotten to him, but you can't sleep on him. He's very dynamic, very dangerous, and he's still got a chance to make big plays in this game. And that defense for Boston College, sharp too. Cole Stout, though, not hurting the Tigers. He has managed the game. He's done a great job. He's thrown at a 74% clip right now, 10 yards per catch every time he throws it to his wide receivers. Both quarterbacks right now not making the crucial mistakes. Who's going to make the big mistake in the second half for both of these teams? That'll be the big question. The Clemson rush defense, fourth best in the country. And look at the yards that they held Boston College to on the ground in the first 30 minutes. Yep. Clemson's done a great job. 68 total yards. I mean, that's domination right there. BC's got to find a way to get the chains moving on third down so they can get those snaps. 23-yard field goal just ahead of halftime is the difference in this game. And Clemson starts with the football in the second half. T.J. Green doesn't even get it back to the 20-yard line. A 16-yard return. And now the Tigers, who managed the clock very well before halftime to get those three points. We'll start with the football here. Cole Stout, 14 of 19, 144. We have not seen a turnover for either team. That's huge. You don't turn the football over, you got a chance in the fourth quarter to win this game. There's our Tavis Scott in the flat. A little screen play. Dominique Williams drops him after the six-yard pickup. We've seen that play now several times, and really it's going to come down to that one missed tackle or that big block out there. Eventually they hope they can spring a big play out of Scott. Second down and four. Play action. Rolling to his right. It's Scott again with the catch. He's got the first down. Makes a nice move to get across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Artavis Scott with Sammy Watkins and Artavis Bryant gone to the NFL. They needed a guy to make an immediate impact, and the true freshman has done that in the passing game. He really has. He's caught the ball, which has been a big thing. He's a freshman uh, coming in here, and he's made some big plays with his legs after he's made the catch. Stop. What a time. Now feels some pressure, moves out, and throws it away. That's what we talked about as far as managing the football game. Doesn't make a mistake downfield. Yeah, you know, everybody's covered here, but he does have a great pocket. you got to watch the offensive lineman here. Gives him a nice open area so he can see the field. To me, run up in that gap right there instead of going all the way around. I know he thinks he's fast, but to me, that's a lot of yardage to run. I gets the ball out of his hands. They don't lose any yards. Be your own second down. Next down, and a short pass. Jordan Leggett, his second catch today. Pickup of four yards, and he is hit and hit hard by Dominique Williams, the captain. And not getting up. Yeah, he, he looked like he got twisted on that play there. He's holding his right knee. Hopefully it's nothing serious for this up-and-coming star by the tight end. As they check on Jordan Leggett, we'll take a break. Back to BC in a moment. Clemson's top pass catching tight end Jordan Leggett may have twisted a knee. He's being helped off the field. Meanwhile, the leading rusher for the Tigers, Adam Choice, has not played since the first quarter. He left with some sort of leg injury. Well, fortunate for Clemson, they are deep at running back with Gallman. Of course, two of the older backs, Howard 22 and 32 Davis, to back him up. First third down of the second half for the Tigers. 6 of 11 today came into the game 43 percent on third down after going 2 of 16 last week against Louisville. Stout sets throws over the middle and the throw is a little bit behind the receiver 
Adam Humphreys, and it's incomplete fourth down. Great pressure up front by Catholic here. You see him, number 93, they run a stunt. Defensive end comes under, underneath, around. And of course, that rushes the quarterback a little bit behind Humphreys. Good play by the Boston College defense. Cameron Moore and Tymere Brown have the coverage in the secondary. Bradley Pinion with his sixth punt today. It's fair caught by Alston at around the 20 yard line. College football prime time presented by Five Hour Energy tonight. Georgia Tech, North Carolina. We'll have that one for you. Came also live on Watch ESPN that defense for North Carolina. You and I have seen it in person this year, allowing 43 points per game. Yeah, it hasn't been uh, stellar and, from and Coach Fedora's group for sure. And now they got to face a triple option attack of Georgia Tech, which is always kind of ticklish dealing with that thing. John Hilleman, it's the first touch for BC on this series. Hilleman has had at least one rushing touchdown in four straight games. He is having a terrific true freshman season. Seven rushing touchdowns on the year. That's third in the ACC. Yeah, you know, it's salt and wood for this team. It's the power game. And when you run the power plays, it's it's about getting two, three, four, five yards, and all of a sudden you spring one. That's what we're going to have to try to do. But Clemson's loading the box in this game. They go to Hillman again. And again, no running room. Ball comes out, but they say he's down. It's going to be a small loss on the play as B.J. Goodson and Corey Crawford combine on that stop for Clemson. That Clemson defense, 38 three and outs this year that they have forced. Five today on seven drives. Yeah, and it really starts at the defensive line position. Crawford, Garrett in the middle, Williams in the middle. Beasley, who really has been quiet as far as the running game's concerned. Look for him now to try to get some pass rush in this game moving forward. Over 90 career starts on that D line for Clemson. Tyler Murphy spinning around, now going the wrong direction, gets it out of bounds. Wow, he was dancing in the backfield, pressure all day long from Corey Crawford and company. But he had the wits about him to get it away and avoid the sack. Yeah, they tried to do a little misdirection, come back and throw it back, but they guarded it well. Corey Crawford gets a hand on him, and right here, this is a desperation moment. See Stewart hit him late. Very lucky to get that ball off and not take that serious yardage loss. Now the seventh punt for Alex Howell today. It's a good one backing off the return man, Humphreys. Trying to cut the corner, gets to the 21 and is pummeled from behind. Josh Kyes leveled Humphreys. Brent Venable's defense has been very good today for Clemson. And we've got a low-scoring affair here at BC. It's 10-7 Tigers. ESPNU College Football is brought to you by Allstate. Proud supporters of college football. Are you in good hands? Union Oyster House. That was restaurant in the country. Some good food in this town. You took us to a very nice restaurant last night. Thank you very much. Italian food. So, you know, I got to treat you South Boston. Well, well, now, wait, treat. Wait a second. Man. You didn't pick up the tab. You just drove us there. Oh, here, you see how this guy throws me under the bus? I drove you there. Is right. That's big. I paid the valet, too. You're welcome. Cole Stout. He is, again, the starting quarterback for the Clemson Tigers. Deshaun Watson on the sideline today. He will be for at least a month with a broken finger. C.J. Davidson. Former track star who walked onto the Tigers with the carry here. So second down for Clemson. Again, they did not have an offensive touchdown last week. And that might be in large part to the fact that this guy got hurt in the first quarter against Louisville. But they do have an offensive touchdown today. Came on the ground from Wayne Goleman. His first rushing touchdown. Stout throws on the run to the tight end, Sam Cooper. First catch of the year for Sam Cooper. 
Big tight end. Good to see him get the ball. You love when there's tight ends get tight. involved in the offense. We don't see many at Clemson getting the rock, and today they're they're utilizing. And now third down. And a long five for the Tigers. See them all. Look at BC right now. See all these defenders right here working their way up. Trying not to show the offensive line where they're going to be. Got to block them up. Stop. Throws. Bring it down. Beautifully covered by the captain. Dominique Williams from his strong safety spot. And the punter will come out again for Clemson. Bring the blitz. Force the quarterback to make a quick throw. Dominique Williams. Great job knocking it away from the big tight end. Cooper. I'll tell you what, Don Brown doing a great job with that defensive unit for the Eagles. This is fair count at the 35 by Alston. It's a decent field position for the Eagles. Monday defensive powerhouse J.J. Watt leads the Texans on the road against Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. A couple of teams that have been reeling in the NFL. 8:15 on ESPN and watch ESPN. No other night is Monday night. Regardless of their records, that man right there, Watt, he shows up yeah. every single game. His work ethic is unbelievable, and it shows on Sunday. He's got a great motor. First and 10 with 10.20 to go here in the third quarter. The Eagles are trying to reverse, and now Borger wants to pass. The former quarterback has a man wide open. Charlie Callahan makes the catch. He had to come back for the football, otherwise that might have been six. Great play design. Bordner gets the ball here, and he dropped the ball earlier, so why not come back, give him an opportunity to make a play in the passing game? That's great concentration. Look at the catch. you got to come back to the football, secure it. I'll tell you why. It's a big spark, a big play this BC offense needed. And again, Clemson's defense, you get nosy, Clay. You start bringing that extra defender in, that's going to be a difference. And now a penalty flag. 12 men on the field. Illegal substitution offense. 12 players in the huddle. Five yard penalty, first down. Yeah. Now it takes a little momentum away, and you can see the look on Steve Adazio's face, who has very little patience for that kind of stuff. As it happens, though, that was a 45 yard play in a game where BC hasn't had a lot of big plays. And now, and now they are uh, picking up the flag. BC called the timeout. Did they grant the timeout? Yes. Yes. They granted the timeout, and they are going to yep. pick up that flag. They are. Very fortunate. Coach Adazio saw that, gets the timeout in. I know Tyler Murphy was running right over to the referee saying, listen, we had a timeout. We're calling the timeout. They get the call. So, with that being said, doesn't nullify that huge play. Only the second Boston College play of 20 yards or more. There's a guy that has seen a lot of big plays in his coaching career Chip Kelly great college coach now having success with the Eagles in the NFL and he has a relationship with BC offensive coordinator Ryan Day who's on the far right there he spent one season with Adazio at Temple as an offensive coordinator but this is his third separate stint at BC and he and Chip Kelly go back a long way. Yeah, they coached together at New Hampshire, you know, back in the day, the old Yankee Conference. That was once a conference back in the day that was recruiting me out of high school. Fortunately, I wasn't good enough to get a scholarship to play the Yankee Conference teams, if you can believe that. How about that? So I'm not there. bitter. I'm not bitter, Chip. So, so on a lark, West Virginia goes after you, and it paid off. In fact, you had a pretty good game in this stadium, if I recall, back in the Thanks 90s. for bringing that up. Should we tell them the stats after this play? Maybe. <laughs> I don't want too many people to turn away. Murphy dumps it out short to Sherman Alston, and again, flags all over the place. Yeah, we got holds all over the place for BC on this one. Alston got to the 24, but this play is going to be wiped down. Holding, offense number 76, 10 yard penalty, second down. That's Bobby Vidaro, the left guard. Yeah, the left guard. Gets beat on by Beasley through the gap, and he'll do that to you now. Sub four five speed. 
You don't want to get your quarterback waxed on that play, and he sticks his arm out and hooks him. Third penalty against Boston College, second this half. Vidaro, four-year starter at that position. Today, career start number 39, but Vic Beasley, who like you mentioned before, has been quiet most of the game, but even when the play is run away from him, he makes an impact. Second and 20. Murphy away from center. Deep handoff, and Hilleman is going to be swarmed under. Grady Jarrett, the defensive tackle. Makes the stop, no gain. Brent Venables absolutely loves Jarrett. A model of consistency, a former high school wrestling champ. Yeah, he's going to play at the next level. He's short, kind of like a... Uh... Uh, Aaron Donald Mold from Pittsburgh last year, shorter guy, but he brings an A game every single week, controls the line of scrimmage, powerful run stopper. Uh, scouts are going to be watching him and trying to make him work at the next level for sure. So after that big play of 45 yards on the gadget, Austin College is kind of stumbling now. Third and 21. Murphy in trouble. Sapped again. J. Ron Curse, and that is the ninth tackle for loss by this Clemson defense, and it's fourth down. A once promising drive snuffed out. Yeah, you'll see the pocket collapse here, but look at everybody in their gap sound here. You see Curse, he comes back inside, fills the open gap that's open uh, by the offensive line that created from BC, and is able to make that tackle and not give up big yards. The running game, Tyler Murphy has been completely neutralized and now a long field for Clemson. As Alex Howell with that big leg puts it inside the five. 38 yard punt, 10-7 Clemson, back in a moment. All Boston College wanted to do today was get this thing to the fourth quarter with a chance to win. And so far that game plan is playing out. Alex Howell, the punter. Eight punts today, averaging almost 50 yards. He has put two inside the 20, this one inside the five, and now Clemson staring at a very long field with a defense that has been exceptional today, looking right at him. Cole Stout, the handoff to Coleman. Lowers his shoulder, gets three yards. John Johnson making the tackle. You're right, BC doesn't score there, Clay, but they change the field position, and that's huge in this game. And you talk about the defense at Clemson. Well, BC has done a great job themselves, and that's been huge in this game, and they're gaining confidence every time they're on the field, too. They're right up the middle with the run, and it's a good one. Gallman has a first down. Stopped at the 15-yard line. It's Johnson again on the stop. Wayne Goldman, a touchdown run in the first half. Give him nine on that carry. AC Cole Stout underneath center when he, when they're back deep. Huge hole there to run through, and, and that's how you get out from backed up, get that first down. Good job by Goldman. 11 carries, 38 yards today for the redshirt freshman out of Georgia. It's Goldman again, and there is nowhere to go on that left side as Harold Landry. Yeah, I'll tell you, I thought there was a hold there, Clay, on number 90, Wojak. As they're going around, you see that pull on the jersey? You can't do that. The referee's right there doesn't see it. But they get a big tackle for a loss there. They are excited about that young man, Landry. True freshman out of McKinney, Texas. Gets the eighth tackle for loss for this defense today. Second and 13, Stout to the sideline, and it's caught. Caught at the 23 by Mike Williams. That's his fifth catch today. That one for 11 yards, just shy of the first down. Well, he's gone to Williams several times. Gets the elbow. His bum's down on the outside. His body's in. Makes his third and short. Good opportunity for this team to move the chains and change the field position to their advantage. In a run. And Goldman, I think... Now, this is going to depend on the spot. Yeah. Initially, I didn't think he got it, but they're going to move the chains. Strezak made the tackle. Goldman had just enough to move the sticks.
time of possession. Almost dead even. Just over 21 minutes apiece for both teams. Stout fakes. Comes underneath and it's dropped. Another drop for the Clemson Tigers this time. It's Goldman. That's the second time they've ran that screen play. They caught it last time, but the tackle was in the way, and Goldman couldn't break free. And then this time they get good defensive pressure by BC up front, and Goldman can handle the catch. There's Chad Morris. Terrific offensive coordinator for the Tigers. That's caught by Jermon Hopper. And now they're looking at third and fairly long again. Chad Morris, great success in high school and this offense the last few years putting up tremendous numbers at Clemson. Well, he's really got to be a smart play caller now with the type of style that they're doing. Same type of plays, but not the quite explosiveness at the quarterback position. See if they can convert this third down. Again, BC's defense showing blitz here. Going to force a quick throw. Eighth play of the drive. Stout, the screen. Hopper, first down. Out to the 38-yard line, and Clemson will keep the drive alive. They keep going at that play, Clay, and I told you, the wide receivers are going to be key on this, and they make some great blocks right there on the outside by the tight end. You see Scott, a freshman. Got to love a freshman trying to block, springing that play. Stout over the middle. That's caught at midfield. By Mike Williams, another first down. That's a gain of 12. Good throw and catch there. Kais takes a big shot on Stout. So the protection's getting a little thin, but Stout's able to get the ball in there to his wide receiver. Under four minutes to go here in the third. Another screen. Scott spins away from a couple of tacklers and then is met by Steven Daniels. And the BC defense. No gain. Second down. BC starting to dial it up a few times here, trying to change his tempo. Like I said, Clemson's been successful going a little faster. You can tell here, once they get those big plays, they start moving a bit faster. The expectations, Chad Moore said, are going to remain the same even without Deshaun Watson at quarterback. On second and ten, stop throws, and it's another first down reception. This time it's Artavis Scott. Dominique Williams escorts him out, but it's a gain of 13. And Clemson now well into BC territory. 58 fewest plays per game. Clemson today over that number already. Clay, a lot of that has to do with their offense and what they've done at BC on this on their side of the football. Creating the run game, getting those extra plays, slowing it down so the offense doesn't get many snaps. After that loss on the play, second down and 11. Again, the uh, target is 80 snaps for Clemson. Stout. Underthrown and nearly picked off. Justin Simmons, the free safety, almost. Picked up Cole Stout. They love Justin Simmons, the most versatile player. You'll see him playing in the nickel, but his real position is a strong safety. Right on number 81. Cole Stout tries to force one in there. Simmons is ready for it. Quick cut, but hold on to it for a pick. I think Stanton Seconder became a defensive back on that play when it was underthrown. Tight end help. Knocked that to the turf. 14th play of the drive, third and 11. Drive started at the Clemson three. Another pass incomplete. Great coverage by John Johnson. Williams can't come up with it, and it's fourth down. Again, it's the pressure of the defense coming up, forcing Cole Stout to throw the ball a little bit early. And he's just off target, throws behind the big receiver. You got to throw it high, Clay. He's 6'4. You got to find a way to get the ball high and outside. And that's always tough when you don't get those reps, especially you didn't practice two weeks ago. 
and then you're getting those reps and trying to get that rapport with your wide receivers. You can see that this is outside of Ammon Lakehip's field goal range. Lakehip hit a 23 yarder right before halftime. And they take the delay a game penalty here. Give their punter Bradley Pinion a little more room. Delay a game, offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. I mean, Dabo Sweeney will use him from beyond 50 yards. Didn't like the situation here. He just would rather pin BC deep and keep this a slugfest. And give it to the All-Stars. The two punters are putting on a show yeah. today. All the action they're getting, pinning the offenses back and making them work for everything on both sides of the football. The freshman Alston standing at the 10-yard line again. Quickly gets the hand up, calls for the fair catch as he steps up the 17-yard line. Not using the field goal nets much today. All State celebrating 10 years sponsoring the Good Hands field goal nets. All State making contributions to participating schools. General scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, $3.4 million in scholarship money has been donated. Tyler Murphy has to be itching to find some open space to run. Goes up the middle. It's across the 20, about the 23-yard line. But this Clemson defense has held the best rushing quarterback in the country in check today. They'll do this all day. I mean, this is their kind of game. They're not worried about the scoreboard, Clay. They're going to keep going out there, keep him in front of the defense, and make the tackles. And you know what? They don't have a high-end receiver that can beat them. Even if they get those plays over the top, they're still going to be able to catch them and make that tackle. So again, this defense is going to be aggressive, they're going to bring pressure, and they're going to have an extra man in the box every time. Look at that, just 49 yards rushing for this offense today. Play fit. Murphy rolling out, looking downfield, and again, he's going to throw it out of bounds. Josh Bordner was streaking downfield, but he was well covered. And his secondary has done a good job for Clemson as well. That's really the one thing they lack at BC. And look, they're building. They're still trying to get those recruits. Coach Adazi does a great job of recruiting. He did an awesome job at Temple and left that cupboard full with many players. But they don't have that big receiver, that fast receiver, to get those open areas to make plays in the passing game. Still yet to convert on third down today. Murphy, a little shovel pass to Marcus Outlaw, and Clemson was ready for it. T.J. Green, Stephon Anthony combined on the stop. There's Brent Venables, coached 13 years at Oklahoma before coming to Clemson. He has got an outstanding unit, one of the best in the country, and they force another punting situation for the Eagles. They really are fundamentally sound. Uh, you see Beasley there who hasn't had an opportunity to get some sacks, but, you know, listen, B.C. and all the teams that they play against always try to have a plan against a great pass rusher like him. Powell gets a good bounce. Still rolling inside the 25. Inside the 20. Alex Howell, who has a big leg, he handles all the kickoffs and punts. Boots that one 56 yards. And again, he flips the field with 35 seconds to go here in the third quarter. What do you make of Cole Stout's day? I think the first half has, has been good. He, he was very efficient. Uh, I think right now, BC's mixing it up on defense. They're making him throw the ball a little faster. Uh, he's got to put the ball in the right spots. He hit some nice passes. He's been consistent. Right now, we haven't seen the big pass by either quarterbacks. And trust me, someone's going to make a mistake. Which quarterback's going to step up and make those plays for their team? Fifth-year senior from Dublin, Ohio. Starts this series. The screen pass out to Scott. And that Clemson sideline wanting a flag. Dabo Sweeney right in the official's grill saying, hey, where's the penalty marker? That was a hit out of bounds, but there are no flags. It's he's, a nine-yard reception. He's an emotional coach, man. On the goods, he's jumping up and down. On the bads, he's right up there. So, uh, again, he, he's well into this game for his football team. Actually spotted it 
As a 10-yard pickup, they move the chains first down, and they run. C.J. Davidson, nowhere to go. And that's going to be the final play of the third quarter in a game that has moved briskly. The defenses have made sure of that. The punter is getting a huge workout today on both sides. And this one, as Boston College wanted it, will be decided here in the fourth quarter. It's a three-point game going to the fourth. That's what we wanted, fourth-quarter game. I love it. Great defenses. Offense is trying to make a big play. It's going to be an interesting fourth quarter here coming up. Back at Chestnut Hill, where you're watching the ACC on ESPN. He's Anthony Beck. I'm Clay Mathic alongside the rest of our ESPNU crew. We are glad you're watching here tonight on homecoming night for Boston College. It's been a uh, slugfest, yes. a defensive game. Clemson leads it going to the fourth quarter by three. They've got the ball at their own 28-yard line. Boston College <laughs> 0 for 9 on third down, just 109 yards of total offense. Clemson has not had a dynamic offensive day either as BC has played very well on defense and that pass is incomplete for Cole Stout and it's third and 11 it was intended for the tight end JJ McCullough Josh Kai's Sam linebacker got good pressure on Stout so now third down Clemson 8 of 16 converting third down today here we go, they're gonna move the defensive lineman around, get this offensive line off tilter. Stout has a man open, it's Davidson out of the backfield, turns it up and gets the first down. Across the 40 to the 42, C.J. Davidson, the junior from Clemson. They swing the back out, Stout knows he doesn't have the extra defender, takes the shot, throws a great ball, they get the first down. I'll tell you what, you can't question his toughness, Clay. No. That AC joint on his left shoulder, his non-throwing shoulder is still tender, you know it. Played through it last week, despite not practicing much the week leading up to the Louisville game. Not 100% for this one. Throws it deep. Under throw, tipped in the air and incomplete. Manny Espria got a hand on it, nearly picked it off. Trying to go to his 6'4 wide receiver on the outside. Got to get a little more air on the football. Mike Williams does a good job of beating him. Again, though, Dominique Williams, number nine, strong safety. If, in fact, he goes up high for that ball, he's going to be right there. So he's trying to force it in there, put it in the right direction to his big receiver. Spria is still down after that play. He's got a cramp. Looks like it. Warm here today. It is a beautiful day. 70 degrees at kickoff. Too warm for Steve Adazio's liking. He likes it cold. He's, he does, a, he's yeah. a former old lineman. He was talking about it. Yeah, he didn't like it at all. He's ready for that. Usually it rains a lot up here in Boston area. Mug, uh, the clouds and the rain overcast. They got that overcast, but they don't have the weather with it. Notre Dame, Florida State. Comes your way at 8 Eastern tonight. A Tennessee Ole Miss game is going to be great as well. As Ole Miss tries to continue its great start to the season. Best start for the Rebels in 52 years. You're right. A lot of people patting them on the back, Clay. And this is one of those games. You know, Tennessee, they have some weapons on offense. Some really good receivers. Worley's done a good job at the quarterback position. They don't want to fall asleep on a team like Tennessee. Well, Espria. Making his way under his own power to the sideline. That's a great sign for Don Brown and his defense. Brown inherited a group that ranked 113th in the country in total defense two years ago, and he has whipped these guys into shape fast. Second down at 10 for Clemson at their own 42 yard line. Numbers for Stout now. 27 of 40 for 241 passing. No touchdowns, no picks. There's Don Brown. Handoff to Davidson. 
Another tackle for loss for the Eagles. That's 11. Daniels and Dominique Williams. Give that play no chance. Third down. Yeah, we definitely want, don't want to overshadow the performance of Boston College's defense. But again, this game has been for both sides a battle. Send three receivers to the right. Williams is lined up as the lone receiver to the near side. Third down and 11. Stout has time. Throws. Intercepted and then dropped. Simmons had it. I don't know if Scott knocked it away from him. Saw that versatility playing in the nickel there. He's a strong safety. He comes down. He's got a lot of jobs. But I'll tell you, we talked about it now, Clay. Look at that. You're right. That's a great job by Scott. The kid is a freshman, first of all. To strip the ball and have that awareness, you don't see a lot of that, even by some of the senior wide receivers. A huge play for Clemson and really saved a poor pass by Cole Stout. Justin Simmons upset with himself that he didn't make the interception. Still a very good play for this defense. They forced the ninth punt for Clemson today. And Alston calls for the fair catch at the 15-yard line. Tyler Murphy came into the game as the top rushing quarterback in the country. 711 yards in six games. It's been a tough day for him running and throwing. Well, you know what? It comes down to the passing part of it, Clay. When you miss those opportunities, and it's not on him, they dropped the ball early in the football game. It, you got to take some of those players from Clemson out of the box. Did have this one touchdown pass to Alston in the first half, but for the most part, Clemson has neutralized him. Well, look, it's 10 7. He hasn't made a big mistake. Cole Stout's getting close. Let's see if Murphy can pick up his game and lead his team down the field. They fake the jet sweep. Murphy has a man wide open. Caught by Crimmins to the 40 and down to the 37 yard line. T.J. Green catches up to make the tackle, but it's a 47-yard play, just what B.C. needed. Every time you get a play action, they're wide open because he sells the run. Look how he dipped the shoulder, and they catch the ball. That's what they need. Dan Crimmins, great job. Look, he's not going to beat you in a 40-yard dash, but he's going to get you some big yards, protect the football. That's how you move the chains and get yourself a big play. Former tight end, now a big six-foot-five target at wide receiver. He's Huge a play for the Eagles. He's a tight end play. Let's not get it wrong. <laughs> Once a tight end, always a tight end, right? Now Murphy pumps. And again, he sails it out of bounds. And they live to play another down. Second and ten. Heck, he had all day. Great protection up front. By this offensive line. Again, they're all graduate students, folks. Every single one of their offensive linemen have graduated already. Might be the smartest O-line in college football. <laughs> and even the quarterback has graduated. That's that's some good minds right there playing this football game today. Yeah, 15 grad students on this team despite the lion's share of the roster being freshmen and sophomores. From the 36-yard line of Clemson, Murphy wants to throw again. Unleashes toward the corner. And it's caught, but out of bounds. Shaquem Phillips was well out of bounds. J. Ron Kirst did a good job funneling him toward the sideline. Yeah, he had a step on him, but Kirst is just too fast. And again, he doesn't turn his head away. Good throw, just a little bit outside. Phillips is a game breaker for them. They haven't been able to get him the ball. Remember, he transferred from UConn. Big playmaker there. And J. Ron Kirst, the nephew of Javon Kirst. First guy Dabo Sweeney hugged last week after that huge win over Louisville. Nice play there. BC yet to convert on third down today. They're 0 for 9. A ton of guys in the box here, Clay. Here comes the Heat Murphy being chased. Finds a receiver at the 21. Charlie Callanan with the first third down conversion of the day for the Eagles. They must have had nine guys in the box right here. And the one guy that was chasing is the fastest defensive lineman on the field. Look at Beasley trying to catch him. Murphy feels the heat. His eyes are downfield. Great throw, great catch, huge play. 
That's how you catch the football, Clay. That's how you help your quarterback. And to make matters worse for Clemson, Stephon Anthony is down on the Boston College sideline. We step aside. Clemson thought they had Tyler Murphy sacked for the fifth time today. Instead, it's the first third down conversion for the Eagles. You're right. Look at all these guys in the box. They got eight players, but look at here. Callanan comes across and he stays with the route, and Murphy's able to come back. Now, we don't want quarterbacks to throw across their body, but he saw an opening there, kept his eyes, watched his completion. It's a great grab by that young man right there. And the middle linebacker, Stephon Anthony, the leading tackler for Clemson, had his cage rattled on that Boston College sideline just before the break. He was able to walk off under his own power. He's going to be all right. So now first down and 10 for this Boston College offense which is now at just 172 yards on the day. They're potentially driving for the go-ahead score. To the four-yard line, Miles Willis. First down and goal to goal, BC. Miles Willis is their number two rusher. Look at the effect you have right here with the quarterback exchange. We talked about ball skills, right? One of the best I've seen in college football creates the huge mo uh, hole there for the running back, and they don't even block him, Clay. He is deceptive. They spot it at the five. Hillman gets the handoff, runs into a wall, and he's down. Shaq Lawson. The defensive end behind Vic Beasley makes that play. And that is the 12th tackle for loss for Clemson. Now we know when it gets tighter down here, this defense steps up. They really took Louisville out of this situation last week in this goal line situation. Watch how this defense tightens it up as BC gets some of their big bodies in there. Power to the right. Murphy rolling to the right, looking to the end zone. Now comes back the other way, has a man open. Bartner goes up and makes the catch. Touchdown, Eagles. He had a big drop earlier. No mistake here. He makes a big pass earlier. You're right, he had the drop. I'll tell you what, can you be happier for any other player? Look at that. And that's a heck of a catch. And Stort's right there. He read it, but he couldn't get it high enough. I'll tell you what, strong arm, strong arm by Tyler Murphy there to drop that up and let the big man jump up and catch it. The ruling on the previous play was a completed catch for a touchdown. The play is under further review. Let me take another look upstairs. Rosie Amato is our replay official today. Tyler Murphy, what looks like his second touchdown pass of the game. It's a six yard completion, even though he threw it about 40 yards <laughs> to the other side of the field, and it was ruled a catch yep. and a touchdown. Man, it's contested. Good job of pulling it down. There's nothing in those two video shots that are going to make me overturn it. And that's the number one thing. See him stick the ball up in the air, get it to the referee's eyes quick, and let him know you caught the football. Has to be indisputable video evidence. And I agree with you. I didn't see anything there that's going to overturn this. Rosie Amato, the replay official, is seeing the same replays you're seeing at home. You see when he falls down, the ball's there, but his hands are underneath. He rolls over and watch the ball. Does it move at all after he rolls over? Play it right there. I don't see any movement in the football. It's close. I, again, if it's close and you can't really tell, Clay, can you overturn it? No, according to the rule. So like you said, indisputable video evidence. We don't have it there, in my opinion. I think I'm undefeated, too, on this thing here. So let's see if we can keep the streak alive. Yeah, hey, you've had a good year. I'll tell you. Better than I thought you'd have. Great camera angles by our crew, I'll tell you. Good job, guys. Bordner voted captain.
for his unselfish attitude after he was asked to move from quarterback to wide receiver this year. Let's see if this holds up. Dennis Hennigan with the call. After further review, the play stands as called. And now Boston College has the number 24 team in the country on the ropes here in the fourth quarter. Leading 13 to 10. Coach Adazio told us yesterday, Clay, you're going to throw the kitchen sink at him offensively. And we've seen a little bit of everything from this offense. Extra point, no good. Wow. A big miss for Mike Knoll, the true freshman kicker. And it stays a three-point game, but Boston College has the lead. 13 to 10. The issues in the place kicking game for Boston College continue. Mike Knoll, the true freshman who was promoted last week for the North Carolina State game, misses this extra point to keep it a three-point difference. That could be huge. Last week he had one extra point blocked, and Steve Adazio says, not again. The senior kicker, Joey Lonsford, was demoted after he had trouble. So Steve Adazio says, I'll give this freshman a try, and the problems persist. And it's almost like he knew. Yesterday even talked about it. He just said, we're going to live and die with this kid. He's young. He's got to get him the reps. But listen, they got the lead. Let's see if the BC defense can continue to play the way they're playing against this Clemson offense. Howell puts it in the end zone. TJ Green brings it out. Probably wishes he didn't as he stops shy of the 20-yard line at about the 18. Here's our Taco Bell game track as Boston College has the lead for the first time. Yeah, right now, Cole Stout, his numbers are starting to separate as far as completion percentage. To me, stick with the game plan, Clay. Run the football, Galman, whoever's back there, Howard, Davidson, try to establish a little bit of running game and make this passing situation easier for Cole. The rain has started to come down here at Chestnut Hill. Stout to throw on first down and complete. Now well, they go against your advice there, yeah. and now it's second down. Yeah, to me, I don't get that. You know, why? We're, you don't need to force the issue to me. You know, Cole is a very good passer when it's ideal situations. To me, run the football, right? Get behind these guys, let these running backs make some plays, and try to move, move the chains a little closer to a third short opportunity. That's tipped in the air and nearly picked off. C.J. Davidson couldn't haul it in. And Tymere Brown, number five, was in the vicinity. But it's third down and ten. And look at the rain coming down now. This is going to actually help Boston College. And two downs, two passes. Almost gets picked. Slapped up in the air. Now you're putting more pressure on your quarterback play to make a play. This is the loudest it's been here at Alumni Stadium today. Cole's got to be smart. Simmons has got a read on him right now on defense. Stout downfield. Has a man. It's caught by Williams. Mike Williams. A 32-yard reception into Boston College territory. Yeah, he's going against a true freshman, Cameron Moore. And to me, that's a mismatch. And finally gets the ball high enough, Clay, that his big receiver can go up and catch it. They go back to the ground game of Davidson. The good run on first down inside the 45 to the 44 yard line. I like that right there. Gain is six on first down. That's what they need. The big, the big yards on the first two downs of the series. Stout to the air again. Caught at the 35. Dancing ahead for a yard or two more is Williams. Mike Williams, the sophomore from Vance, South Carolina. Having a terrific day. That's another 12 yards. As you look at his stats, eight catches now for 128. And he's got them hands on his hip. He's getting utilized today in his football game as an impact player. He has been the guy to step up into Sean Watson's absence. And here goes C.J. Davidson. One man to beat. He dives in. Touchdown. How about that response for Clemson as Davidson takes it in from 32 yards out.
I talked to some of the coaches about this guy. And they said, look, he's got one speed. He's not making many jukes. Gets in. It's a great job. You know what, Clay? It's good to see the older guys. The older backs contributing. Got a lot of young players in the backfield. See Howard in there. Now Davidson gets his turn. He was a track star in high school. and he gets into the open field, you might as well forget about it. Yeah, he saw him dive. He's a former long jump and triple jump. That's what I like to see, utilizing that skill set. And this extra point for Ammon Lakehip is good. And the lead for Clemson is theirs again. It's a four-point advantage now for the Tigers here in the fourth quarter. As C.J. Davidson scores from 32 yards out. A journey to the next great championship in sports. ESPN, home of the new college football playoff. New Year's will never be the same. First college football playoff rankings from the 13-member committee come out in 10 days. Anthony Beck is not on the 13-member committee, but he likes to show off with his picks every week. This is what you've got right now. I do, and you know, far to say Notre Dame play today, but I did say Kansas State was the best or excuse me, second best one loss team behind Auburn. So I, I'm going to stand by that. They got the job done against Oklahoma. Again, Ole Miss, see if they are falling asleep against Tennessee today or not, if they come out and play the, the game they need to play. How about Alabama putting on a whooping on Texas A&M today? I mean, uh, they're, yep. they're certainly in the conversation to play their way in. Clemson Athletic Director Dan Radakovich is on that 13-member committee. Again, the first rankings come out on the 28th of October. Miles Willis stopped just shy of the 19-yard line. These two offenses have waited to the fourth quarter to put together their best drives of the day. BC on its last seven plays, 84 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, you see the damage in that last play. Wide open because of the run game and establishing those fakes. And right there, again, you pull the defender without even blocking him. I love his ball skills. Look at his throw. I mean, all the way across the field. And Bordner gets the catch after dropping one early in the game. Now we'll see what Steve Adazio's team can do here as they go back down by four points. And that extra point miss looks huge right now. Alston steps out of a tackle, gets to the 25, and still on his feet close to the first down marker before T.J. Green finally catches up to him and brings him down to the turf. True freshman is a shifty player. To me, I'm thinking, heck, just run this thing. Go as fast as you can. But look, he hits the brakes. Two guys fly by. He's a hard guy to tackle, too. Five, yeah. six. It's about as tall as you, Clay. <laughs> I wear elevator shoes, though, so I hide it well. Second down and one for a team that is finally starting to move the ball offensively. But then, as I say, that Alston is swallowed up. For a loss of five yards, Corinne Wiggins, the Sam linebacker for Clemson, with the tackle. And they want to run jet sweep there. Alston looks like he pulled on it a little too early because I think Tyler Mur Murphy wanted to pull that back and run the football himself. They're very lucky there. They didn't have a mishandle and a fumble. Would have been devastating. I think that's what happened. Yeah, you see yeah. the offensive coordinator right there, Ryan Day, shaking his head. Ryan Day grew up. About 50 miles from here. He calls Boston College his home. He loves it here. His quarterback throws it downfield. Open man. Caught first down. The Eagles will move the chains as Charlie Callanan, the redshirt freshman from New Jersey, has not made a lot of plays today, but the ones he has made have been important. They had a huge catch on the last drive. And I'll tell you what, the protection has been magnificent right now in the second half, especially in this fourth quarter for BC, allowing Tyler Murphy to throw the football, especially with this rain coming down. Now they speed the tempo up. And another play that gets stopped before it gets started. Miles Willis cut down by Grady Jarrett. Man, he is physical. He's a beast. Now this guy is a disruptor. He's somebody that can penetrate. Right here, number 50. I'm gonna circle him right there for you so you don't miss him, because this one's quick. Watch him penetrate. Hard to block him. One guy really fends off two blockers, shoots the gap. See him working his shoulder there. Tough guy, though. I'll tell you what, he, he's a player now. He's a ball player. Fourth quarter comes around. He's a guy you can count on. 
Second and 15, Murphy. Again hit. Tries to recover, and he is dumped by Josh Watson. The 14th tackle for loss by this Clemson defense. And sack number five on Murphy. How good is Clemson's defense? Oh. I mean, they've got athletes everywhere. Tony Stewart, he's been in the backfield the entire day. Stephon Anthony's back in there, running around. You got these DBs that are peeking inside. They got eight in the box. They take chances. Love watching it. The rain has really started to come down here. Third and 18. Murphy. Inside handoff to Willis looking for daylight and there isn't much it closed quickly what was there and Tony Stewart the Senior makes the tackle and it brings up fourth down and now Boston College has to punt and hope that they can get the football back this time is starting to work against them Yeah, you're right and again, you know, they're down by four could have been three and they make an easy extra point So they're gonna have to score a touchdown and it might have to come from the arm of Tyler Murphy instead of his legs 10th punt Boston College today, another good one for Alex Howell. That went 47 yards. Clemson has it at their own 20, leading by four with under six minutes to go. They're meeting tonight as undefeated opponents for the first time since 93. That great game that Notre Dame won that year. Golson and Winston will be under the bright lights tonight on ABC at 8 Eastern time. First true road game for the Irish. We'll see what they're made of tonight. And Florida State, which has had so many distractions because of the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, we'll see how they respond at home. Wayne Gorman, as Clemson keeps it on the ground. The clock is their friend right now. They pick up four, second down and six. And on the flip side, BC's offense takes a little bit to move down the yeah, field. They're not built on those big down the field plays. Although today they've had some wrinkles that have helped them, but they're really not known for being that quick scoring offense. And Clemson, which does run fast, has slowed it down considerably now. Taking time, they're huddling up. Play clock goes inside 10. Clemson trying to get its fifth win of the year and fourth in the ACC. It's going again. And he's dunked this time as Truman Goodapple makes the tackle. It'll bring up third down. And fairly long here for the Tigers. It looked like he slipped on that wet turf. Yeah, they try to block him, but Gauman can't stick his foot in the ground because it's a little damp out there with this rain. And they get a big play, create third and long. It was warm and partly sunny when the game started. It's turned into a cool, wet night. Yep. And they've been looking for this man right here, Mike Williams. Top of your screen. Let's see if Cole goes there again. Timeout. First timeout of the half for Clemson. Each team with two remaining. Don't forget, coming up later tonight here on ESPNU, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, as we keep it in the ACC. Georgia Tech in the top 25 before that loss to Duke last week. Again, Duke, a very good football team. Georgia Tech, a triple option, always yeah. tough to defend, and North Carolina has had issues on defense this year. Yeah, they've had a hard time just getting ready for the spread, let alone just a few days to get ready for Georgia Tech style of offense. So, uh, again, it's been a tough go for North Carolina this season. Georgia Tech, again, continues to grill off those wins and stay at the top of the ACC. The ACC Atlantic, you see Clemson. They can match Florida State at the four win total if they can finish this one off. Boston College trying not to drop under 500 in lead play. Third down and seven. Clemson trying to keep control of the clock. Give me a first down here. And I got to think, the top of your screen, BC strong safety. He's got to cheat towards Williams. Stout keeps it, and he's going to try and run for it. He's not going to get there. Little surprise, Brian Mahalik 
The big 6-9 defensive end makes the tackle, and it's fourth down. BC will get the football back. You know, it's a dangerous area to throw. He's not the fastest runner at all, and he gets balled up there pretty quickly. But again, you got to have confidence in your defense, and I think that's one thing Dabo Sweeney can count on is his side of, at that side of the football. There have been some missed opportunities for Boston College here tonight. Most recently, that extra point miss, which means that Boston College will need a touchdown here to take the lead instead of three to tie. Going to get the football back. This is the 10th punt of the night for Clemson as Pinion kicks it to Alston. Alston trying to spin out of a tackle and can't. A 55-yard punt by Pinion and great kick coverage by the Tigers. Here are the opportunities I was alluding to for Boston College. Yeah, you know, Tyler Murphy had a chance early. Throws a beautiful ball. Bordner drops it. And this PET right here, the kicker just shanks it right. They've had issues. He's a freshman. Coach Adazio obviously going into this game knew of those opportunities that might come up that the kicker are going to have. And he said, listen, we're going to play the freshman, and we're going to live and die with those consequences. And right now, they're going to have to score a touchdown now instead of a field goal. The transfer from Florida, Tyler Murphy out of the gun. Hands off to John Hilleman. A tough earned yard. This is a scrappy, tough team, just like their head coach, Steve Adazio. He says, if anything, I'm going to have a tough team. I might not have the most talented team. I might not have the most experienced team, but my team will always be tough. We'll see what their character is can do here late in the fourth quarter down four and he speaks so highly of Tyler Murphy let's see if he can put a signature drive together for his team Danson still on his feet breaks free into Clemson territory and inside the 40 yard line of the Tigers well he just put his John Hancock right there on that signature play that's that's what you're looking for out of your senior Look at the maneuverability. Protect the football, Tyler. But they can't catch him. Dive him left, dive him right. He feels some converging on him, secures the football. Huge play for the senior quarterback. His longest run of the day, 43 yards. Top rushing quarterback in the FBS, Clemson. Couldn't bring him down. And now they're at the 38-yard line of Clemson, needing a touchdown. Miles Willis for two. And we go inside two minutes. Boston College, two timeouts remaining. Clemson with two. We got a ball game here, man. Fourth quarter, two teams battling, two senior quarterbacks. That's what it's all about. Murphy looking to throw. Steps up again. And he gets out of bounds at the 28-yard line, very close to the first down. And they're going to call for a measurement. Most importantly, for Boston College, that clock stops. Yep. And if they can be 5-2 and two with two wins over top 25 teams, this would be huge for this Boston College program, which already seems ahead of schedule. Yeah, they're rebuilding, right? They're, he's re recruiting. He's got so many young players. But you know what he said that's important? He's like, look, you can't win in this business unless you got a quarterback. And Tyler Murphy's that guy that can hold the pieces together while they're still trying to get those other pieces in place for the future. Short by inches. So it'll be third down and about the length of a football for Boston College. Clay, you got five guys on the line of scrimmage that have all graduated, all got experience, and they all weigh over 300 pounds. There's no question in my mind, if you can't get half a yard against any defense, regardless who it is, this is going to be a slugfest right here on this play with these two def defense and offensive lines. Especially when you got the best running quarterback yeah. in the nation. Got a big back. He's a freshman, 220 pounds. 
Get a little push up front, get your yard, move the chains. Yeah, they think Hillman will be about 230 pounds when they finally get done with him at training table and in the weight room. So third and inches there, only two of 12 on third down today. The fake, Murphy throws over the middle. Batted down incomplete. Fourth down. Intended for Bordner. Well, they're obviously going to go for it on fourth down. They took a chance. You had all those guys up in the box. Tried to sneak. Tried to sneak one more. Look at all the players in there. Everybody's selling on run. Good job by the Clemson back end not to fall asleep. And they just try to catch him here. Robert Smith and Ben Bulware on the coverage. Got to be a quarterback sneak to me. They're on both sides of the center here. Just run right up the middle. Murphy hands off. And Boston College is able to pick up the first down. John Hilleman. They go to the true freshman, and he converts. Again, all seniors up front, graduates. I'll tell you, Clemson's got a great defensive line. But that experience up front really comes to shine on the third and inches, fourth and inches plays. Now Murphy to throw in first down, and man up again, and it's dropped by Tyler Rouse. And that would have been six. My goodness. I tell you, you know, it's tough. Young players, drops a dime. I mean, listen, let's not take away from what this quarterback has done. They, Tyler Murphy, has put the ball where it needs to be. And I'll tell you, this man right here, he really has to be thinking, man, the opportunities, the chances, the kicks, the drops. He's building here, folks. There's no question about it. But Tyler Murphy, what a job he's done. That was placed perfectly. Now he wants to throw again, chased, and tries to get rid of it. And does. Bullware had him almost wrapped up and ready to come down, but wasn't able to do that. That stops the clock with a minute and one second to go and a third and ten coming up for Boston College. You know, Tyler Murphy's going to have to do it with his arm here. There's no question about it. Field goal doesn't do him anything in this situation. Down four. This is the game right here. And I'll tell you what, he's coming up big now. When he asked him to make a big play in the running game, he did. He brought him down the field, and they're going to lean on him on this play. Can this Clemson defense do it two weeks in a row with a big stop? We'll see. Third and ten. Murphy stepping up. Throws to the end zone for Phillips. And it sails yeah. out of the back of the end zone. Alexander, number two, in on the coverage. And now it comes down to this fourth down. And it starts with the pressure at Clemson. There's no question about it. It's a factor in this game. It's been a factor every week since they started this season. Tyler Murphy just throws it out of bounds. We got too many guys out there. Again, uh, tough situation for DC. And you got coaches now. This isn't Coach Adazio. You got offensive coaches on the sideline that get this personnel in and out. Players got to make sure they carry each other out, make sure the right personnel's in, especially when you're going fast here. This is it right here on fourth down. Murphy throws a rifle shot into the end zone, incomplete, intended for Phillips. And nearly coming up with that interception was Jadar Johnson. And that's going to do it. Yep. See Be Vic Beasley giving a high five. And again, this is this is tough here. Fourth and 15. Just tries to sling one in. The defense is home. Really a nice ball. He gave him an opportunity, but just couldn't pull it in there with Phillips. Be a tough catch. And Steve Adazio is thinking what might have been here tonight. Too many mistakes by this young team. And let's give uh, credit to Clemson Clay. I mean, listen, you know, it, it was a close game last year. They had a close game last week. They have Cole Stout, who's been injured. Quarterback goes down. A lot of things going on for this football team. And their defense has really been the glue for this team in this little run they've had. 30 second timeout. 
Uh, Clemson needed a little luck last week to come away with a win against Louisville. They come on the road to Boston College and they find themselves in a defensive battle here tonight. And it looks like they're 46 seconds away from escaping with their fifth win of the year, their fourth win in the ACC. Listen, they, they continue to go out there and, and fight. And, and they got a great defense. And that's really what's been the difference right now. Even though the quarterback's been down, the guy they want out there, they've been able to hold it down and keep the score down low so Stout doesn't have to make huge plays. Cole Stout will take a knee. And Boston College will burn its last time out. Boston College. Dabo Sweeney in his sixth full season as the Tigers head coach got his first win as head coach right here in Boston in 2008. And surprisingly tonight was the first time as a head coach he'd been without his starting quarterback. It's amazing. <laughs> and Deshaun Watson will be out for at least another three weeks. Cole Stout will run the offense until that time. And 29 of 45 passing, 285 yards, did not throw a touchdown, but he also didn't throw an interception. He managed this offense today. A couple close ones, but you're right. You know, nothing's checked out on the board. And there you see Deshaun Watson. And can they hold the fort down? They got Syracuse, Wake Forest, two teams that they should feel like they should be better than and win. And then maybe they can get Watson back, possibly Georgia Tech and Georgia State there. The early projections for the postseason have Clemson in the Orange Bowl on New Year's Eve. Now, provided Florida State gets a playoff spot and the Tigers can manage the rest of that schedule in the ACC, they should be going to a big bowl game this year. Dabo Sweeney takes a big sigh of relief as Cole Stout and number 24 Clemson avoid the upset here to Steve Adazio's team today. Well, two things. Clemson's got an outstanding defense. And Coach Adazio on the other side, this BC team, they got grit, they got fight, and they got some young talent. They're going to be good here in the next couple of years. Cole Stout has been a great senior leader. He got demoted. Circumstances led to him getting his job back, and he leads his team to a hard-earned win on the road tonight. Wins on the road are always hard to come by. That was certainly the case in this defensive struggle. But it is Clemson coming away victorious. Coming up next, we're going to send you back to the studio to catch you up on the busy Saturday that it has been in college football. For Anthony Beck, Doug Clay Matvick. Now let's send it to Matt and Kevin in the studio. Thank you, guys. 17-13 Clemson for the second straight week, a one-possession win. That's four straight wins for Clemson.